nearly all men can withstand adversity but if you want to test the true character of man give him power these are not my words but the words of the former us president abraham lincoln we have had strong men in these successive governments since kenya's attained its independence uh, those are men who have shaped the history of this country and they remain in historical books for the rest of our lives number one in Njoma kenyatta we have mbiu koinange this is a man who who was at the center stage of political power for the 15 years Jomo Kenyatta was in power and the matters it became even worse the time when Kenyatta married his sister this is the guy who was adversely mentioned in the uh, death of or assassination of uh, uh, JM Karyuki the report that was tabled by Elijah Mwangali in the parliament had the name of Mbiu Kainange and the PA of uh, a, a President a Jomo Kenyatta. And the President told Mwangali before you present the report on the floor of the house, he had to remove the name of Mbiu Koinange and his personal uh, security assistant. In Moi's government number two, the most powerful person was none other than Nicholas Biot. This is was called Mr. Fixit. He fixed so many things, especially after the attempted coup. But this is the guy who is largely blamed for the death of Dr. Robert Ouko. Robert Ouko went with the president to the trip to the United States, President Moi, and uh, Biwot was among the people. So uh, Moi did not meet the president in the White House, but Robert Ouko did. So Biwot became furious and he, according to him, he thought that it is a Robert Ouko's association with the White House that has stopped President Moi from meeting uh, the, the U.S. president. And when Robert Ouko landed back in Kenya, that's when he got lost and finally found dead near to his home. In the Kibaki government, the most powerful person was the head of public service, Francis Mudaura. This is a guy who fixed most of the things in Kibaki's government. And as you can all remember, he was also adversely mentioned and persecuted in an international criminal court for being one of the masterminds of 207-208 Kenya's post-election violence. This is a man during the coalition government who even uh, uh, fixed issues and even at a time said Kalonzo Musioka as the vice president of Mike Kibaki was powerful in protocol or was in a higher rank than Raila Amolo Odinga. In President Uhuru's government, we had none other than Dr. Fred Matiangi. This is a guy which even at a time he acted as the minister for education and a uh, minister for interior and coordination after the death of General Ngaiseri. And he served in these two capacities for several months. And in whichever ministry uh, Uhuru Kenyatta wanted things to run the way he wanted, he could send Dr. Fred Matiang. He's the man who, who silenced the Al Shabab. That time, Al Shabab were bombing the Republic of Kenya everywhere, but Matiang is silenced. Exam cheating. Matiang went there and exam cheating cases vanished. In the Ruto administration, the most powerful guy who even if you want to be appointed by President William Ruto, you must go through his door. He must give you a year. If not, you will not get that position. It doesn't matter whether you are learned or not, whether you are popular or unpopular. But if whenever you are in good books with him, then you are in good books with the President William Samuel Ruto. This guy is none other than Farouk Kibet, the long-time personal assistant of the president. What is your take? Who is another guy do you think belongs to this uh, group? 